Ladies and gentlemen, we're about to get started. Hello? Okay, okay, George will be out in a moment, but before we get started, we want to get an idea of some of the questions you will be asking. Yo, yo, can you go Windows over the Windows or Mac? Okay, okay, okay. everybody, boxes. please, what not all at once. Do you recommend? This is nuts, this is not working. You You're right. Please, please, people. Let's just bring out George. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, George Widom. Hey everybody, this is George Widom and you're watching another episode of Widom's World. Well, I figured it's the end of the year, this is the last one for 2013, and why not do something a little bit different this time? I'm going to see how many questions I can get through in 10 minutes. So I'm just going to let the timer run. I've got a whole bunch of questions in the queue here, and uh, we'll let's just see how I can do. Mike Zink and Ed Gilland... Both have questions about soundproofing windows. They want to know what's the best way to soundproof a window. Well, I love closed cell foam. You can buy two inch thick closed cell foam. It's like neoprene, like diving suit kind of foam that you can stuff into the windows, cut it to the size and shove it into the window frame. And it does a really good job of knocking down a lot of the noise coming in through the window. That's probably one of the cheapest, quickest, easiest ways to do it. And it can be removed really easily. Steve Hearn asked, do I need to use a hardware compressor for a voice? No, you don't, because you can actually uh, use compression after the fact. But having a compressor before the computer or before the interface can be helpful because it means that you don't always have to watch your levels quite as carefully. And if you get too loud, it will automatically reduce the volume for you. So it can be helpful at times. Januel Nalupta asks... When I submitted a recording for public feedback, I received a comment that my sound was mastered to plus 0 0.02 dB when I should be striving for around minus 9. How do I do that? What's the problem? Is this a technical or acoustical problem? Well, it's a technical problem. I think what they're saying is that your levels peaked right above 0 dB, which is pretty much distortion. So they're basically telling you that when you record to reduce your gain so your levels don't peak much above nine, minus 9. I usually recommend between minus 6 and minus 3 for your peak level range. Aaron Haynes writes, I tried grounding and turning off things, but I'm still getting interference clicks in my recordings. What's making this happen? Well, it could be a lot of different things, but um, sometimes some computers have trouble recording a stream of audio from a USB interface. If it's a PC, you might want to install a dedicated USB card just for your sound device, or you may need to optimize your system. Check online for information on how to optimize your computer for recording audio and you'll find a ton of tips on how to optimize Windows and there's also inf information out there for Mac users as well. Dave Flatley asks, what do you think of the SoundForge software and what do you think of the 528e voice processor? They're both fine. Uh, I think the 520e, 528e is really a radio processor it's not my favorite. I don't like the EQ. It doesn't have a high pass filter, so it has some limitations. But if it's what you got, it you can make it work really well. SoundForge is a nice basic recording and editing software for PC. It's not hard to learn, and the audio studio version of it is very inexpensive. It's a great way to start. Some people find it's all they ever needed. Lance DeBach asked, is a minus 65 dB noise floor acceptable, or should I continue to use the noise gate? If you have a minus 65 dB noise floor, you're doing really well. That's totally acceptable, and I don't think you'll probably ever need to use a noise gate. If you do use a noise gate, just use it to help control breaths, which can sometimes be helpful and other times be uh, not so helpful. So you got to use your ears. Robert Leach says, is a headset mic a viable option? Should it be an Omni and what brand? When I say Omni, should it be a mic that picks up in all directions? Well, pretty much every headset microphone is an Omni microphone by design. It doesn't need to be anything but Omni because the microphone is placed so close to the mouth that it's not going to pick up much else except your own voice. Um, but you still need to have good room acoustics and you still have to have a quiet space. Okay, so it won't fix those problems, but it certainly lets you move around. As for brands, Audio-Technica, Countryman, and if you really have a budget to spend, DPA makes some incredibly good headset microphones. So give it a shot. I think you'll find it liberating. Mark Stanley says... 
My noise floor appears to be about minus 50 to minus 55 dB, but it seems to my ear to be excessively loud. Should I use noise reduction? Well, what to do? Well, if it sounds loud, that means that it's a lot of white noise, and you might want to look into your equipment. It could be the US, it could be a USB microphone that's a little bit noisy. It could be a gain staging issue where you've got this gain knob turned up too high and this one turned down too low. Uh, it could be a number of things. But noise reduction should be an absolute last resort because it does add and can add artifacts. But if you really need to reduce the, the noise floor a little bit, I prefer using a properly set up noise gate or downward expander, which I usually will do in software because it will reduce the noise floor trans very transparently without adding artifacts if it's done correctly. Next question, Keith Chopping. I have been advised that if I use my laptop, I should use a Shure SM58 with an Onyx Blackjack mixer. I also have been advised to use my iPad mini with a Focusrite iTrack Solo and Rode NT1A mic. Would these work for recording voiceovers? And is it essential to have a vocal booth? Yes, they will all work. An SM58 works in a total pinch. Absolutely not the best mic for voiceover. Will it work? Yes. Should you get a different mic? Definitely. I would say the Rode NT1A would be a great way to go for either working at home and possibly on the road. In fact, if you're going to flip it around, I would use the SM58 while traveling and leave the NT1A at home, actually, uh, because the SM58 is a dynamic mic. It can handle a lot more abuse. It rejects more noise, and uh, it's, it might be a better way for traveling. And the Focusrite iTrack Solo is fantastic. It works with iPad, Windows, Mac. It's a really useful device. Onyx Black, the Onyx Blackjack that's made by Mackie works fine. And no complaints about that. Marie Hoffman asks, how much time to edit and master an audiobook? Do I, four, I'm doing a four hour book. It's taking me like four to six hours a day editing. And I've only made it about to eight, eight of the 12 chapters. Yeah, well, when you do your first book, it's going to take you about six to eight hours per finished hour. That's not too unusual. But with a lot of practice and learning some techniques, you should be able to get that down to about four or maybe even three to one. And I'm including recording, editing, and mastering your audiobook. So I can train you on that. I also have webinars I've taught on the subject that will help you shave huge amounts of time off your production. Thomas Dunn asks about silent in-booth recording devices or using a second screen. Yeah, I mean, there's all kinds of ways to record silently inside a voiceover booth. If you really want to have the recording device in there with you, go with something that has no moving parts and no fans, like an iPad or some sort of tablet computer, or a handheld recorder like a Zoom H4n or a Tascam DR40. They can be used with any kind of studio microphone, and they're absolutely silent, and they're very reliable. If you want to have a second monitor, keyboard, and mouse in there, no problem. Set them up in there. Anything with an LED backlight display is going to be silent. And pretty much any PC, Mac, or Windows with a, a laptop or desktop has a second monitor output. So that should be very easy to hook up. Steven Gonzalez says, Behringer USB 1204 mixer limitations. Okay, he's having complaints that he doesn't seem to be able to play back what he's just recorded and hear it. Well, the USB 1204 mixer uh, is kind of limited in that when you play back, it only can play back through the headphones or the speakers, and you have to press a button that will route that signal back through the mixer. It can't be routed anywhere else. Um, but if you're still not getting playback in your headphones, then there's probably a setting wrong in Audacity, or there's something wrong with the driver for that device, and you'll want to contact Behringer for support on that. Reggie Green asks, how do I hear myself recording in Audacity? Well, Audacity does have the ability to pass through the audio that comes in in the preferences, but that's going to be useless because it's going to be delayed. That's called latency. So that's useless to you. You really don't want to try to monitor yourself through Audacity. You want to have an audio device, either a microphone or a USB interface, with a headphone jack that allows what's called zero latency monitoring. That's how you're going to hear yourself properly while recording in Audacity. Dorian J asked, how do I set my 266XL compressor? Uh, well, you got to use your ears, Dorian. Um, I would say start with a gentle ratio of compression, no less than or no more than three to one. Two to one to three to one is good. Start the threshold maybe between 15 and minus, minus 15 and minus 20. Set the attack as about as fast as it'll go and put the release around 50 to 80 milliseconds. You should have pretty good results starting with those settings. And I think the last one, Bob Schmidt, preamp sound card for a TLM 103. I would say go for a Scarlet. 2i2. Can't go wrong with this thing. 
Sounds clean, easy, plug and play, and it works great with that mic. Time's up. Happy New Year, everyone. Yay, I did it. <laughs> wow, I just picked 15 questions, threw them into a text document, and started reading. I had no idea I'd be able to get through those in 10 minutes. If you have any questions that you would like to have answered in the new year, please do send them in the Widom's World at edgestudio.com, and I'll be glad to give you a hand. And uh, if you need any support one-on-one -on -one with me or tech support of any kind, tech education, custom audio processing settings, booth tuning services, all that stuff is available over at vostudiotech.com. And uh, go check it out. Everything's priced there clearly for you, and you can schedule everything right online. So I hope you all have a happy and healthy new year, and I'll see you guys all in 2014. Take it easy.